Hey everybody, welcome to Wager Talk TV. Scott Spritzer here, and we're doing a little something different. Something we're going to try to do throughout the course of the football season at wagertalk.com is have basically a Friends of Wager Talk segment, and we're quite pleased uh, to have our first guest being Kelly Stewart. You know her, follow her on Twitter at Kelly in Vegas, and of course of KellyInVegas.com. Certainly pleased to have you. Thanks for coming down today and shooting some uh, football videos with I us. I appreciate you guys having me. It's always great to have you. I, I had the pleasure of doing some Monday night radio throughout the course of the 2014 season last year. Monday nights, we did uh, the show on Yahoo Sports, Sports X Radio with Ken Thompson. And we sat there for two hours every Monday night. We basically talked about what had just happened on the week that was just completed in the NFL and college. And we took an early week preview of the games that were about to come up, played Saturday and Sunday. And so I got a chance to watch and see what you do when it comes to how you approach handicapping football games. A lot of people out there know you've had fantastic success since you've been in the business of beating the sports books, but a lot of people don't know exactly what you put into it, the ingredients into the recipe of the attempt to win 11 over 10. You know what I mean? So here's a chance to kind of tell the folks out there what you're looking for when you're breaking down a college football or an NFL slate. I think I'm very different than a lot of people. A lot of people, I mean, we know people with computer algorithms. We know people that just use their power rankings. We know people that are just gung-ho on their math and they won't go any other way. I like to take a big mix of everything. Mm -hmm. I like to talk to people in, let's be honest, the sports industry. I like to talk to people in our industry. I like to look at trends. I like to look at a lot of data. And then you have your math to back it up. You have your stats to back it up, um, as well as power rankings. I know some very, very sharp guys, and I'm far, far lesser than they are that are nice enough to share their power rankings with me and say, hey, Kel, why don't you compare your notes with what you have here? And when that all kind of comes together in about 30 to 40 hours a week worth of work, and mm. you come out with a 5-0 and o Super Contest Sunday. Awesome, by the way. Yeah, her week <laughs> one you. card, and you could be watching this down the road, but her week one card was a perfect 5-0 and o slate. And last year, I joined up with a buddy of mine. There's, he, he has a completely different approach than I have when it comes to handicapping games. And we thought, let's mix the two. Big Al, I love Big that. Morty, and you know Big Al. And so we ended up finishing 16th out of 1,403 entries. And we collected a pretty nice paycheck. And we're up and doing it again. 3-1-1 one, one the first week. You, what would you go, 15-0 oh, the last three no, weeks of the NFL so contest? No, so close. Or? I was a uh, fumble pick six away from, That's what it, yeah. I don't know what you want to call it, the Rams Seahawks when they fumbled on the half yard line. Uh, away from going 15 and 0 to win the mini contest, but luckily you still won the mini contest. I did. I, I was 14 yeah. and 1, which the year before, like three mm -hmm. people had to share it. I, I got fortunate enough that my opponents had three or two or worse. Right. So I got to cash a nice little check, and uh, I'm back at it again for this year. I'm still waiting for dinner, by the way, because we're sitting there on a Monday night doing the radio show, and we just had this long, grueling season as everybody goes through to finish 16th and collect this check, and she does a great job of going 14 and 1. Wins about as much in that three-week period as we went for that entire grueling season, and I'm still waiting for the dinner. You but know, actually, oh, you and Ken probably dinner for that because you guys are like, if you don't go 15 to 0, you're not back on the show. We're going to blacklist <laughs> you from Vegas. <laughs> Absolutely messing with you throughout the show. Got to mention real quickly because one of the things that I always tell people is not to get too caught up in what teams did that previous week, whether they had a bust-out week or they had a, a terrible week. And one of the ways that I do it, I was going to ask you if you have a similar approach. I, I was taught this by a so-called betting mentor like 20 years ago, is I'll make my plays for the upcoming games, my, my lines, I should say, for the upcoming games a week in advance. And for instance, like October 3rd games that are coming up, I'll make my lines for October 3rd games on September 24th before that previous week's Thursday's games kick off. And what it tends to help me do is stay away from overreacting to a team that had, you know, basically an anomaly for their season. They broke out and they won big and they're a mediocre team or they're a good team that played a really bad game. Is there anything that you use to gauge so you stay away from that stuff? I do love that. One thing I told my subscribers, uh, we were talking about, I can't remember the specific game last year. I was like, you guys cannot hold grudges. Mm. I was like, being a female, we know all about holding grudges. Sure. So it's extra hard for me. But let's be honest, you cannot take what happened the week before. Mm. Um, there are teams that do make my do not bet list after three or four times of mm -hmm. burning you for example, the Jets last year, but sure. hey, I put them in week one of the Super Contest because, again, you cannot look at what a team did last year to solely base your numbers on. You can look at it for data and you can make um, assumptions about what you think they might do, but mm -hmm. like you said, I love that. And Maybe now that's what I'm going to start doing is looking a couple weeks ahead, making my numbers early, taking some more time to do that so that I completely wipe out the bias. You know what it's done for me? It doesn't give me as many plays as it does keep me off of losers. That's what it tends to do. I mean, I might have three or four plays that I may have used that I don't even use the opposite side in that particular game, but it keeps me from losing or from using that That's side. That's a winner in my, my book. Numbers. Absolutely. It saves you a lot of money. She's Kelly in Vegas. You follow her on Twitter at Kelly in Vegas. Check her out at 
KellyInVegas.com. We really appreciate you coming down. Continued success in Westgate. Continued success in all your endeavors. We really appreciate it. Have Thanks a good so one. much, Scott. All right, stick around for more WagerTalk.tv.